In today's video we're going to be talking about suppliers and supply invoices on Sage Accounting. Good day, my name is Heinrich Hubier. I've been in the accounting industry since 2008 and I've got many years of experience when it comes to Sage Accounting. Um, so in today's video I want to show you guys everything that you need to know when it comes to suppliers and supply invoices on Sage Accounting. Maybe before I continue, remember once again just to like the video, subscribe to my channel as well. Keep in mind that if you are looking maybe for a new accountant for your business, please go check out our website saaccountingnetwork.co.za. We've got a list of many different accountants all over South Africa that can assist with your accounting needs. And then also remember that if you do not have a Sage subscription yet, or if you haven't signed up for the package, then I really want to ask you guys to use the link in the description of this video to sign up. There's a referral code in there, which I get some brownie points from Sage if you guys sign up through my videos. So it will be really kind if you do use my link to sign up for Sage. And then keep in mind as well that if you've got a paid Sage subscription, then I give away free half an hour consultations where I can, where I can answer any questions that you guys have on Sage. All the details about that um, about that, that, that offer will be found in the video. I'll put a link in the video above. And then, um, yeah, let me jump down to my computer. Then I can show you exactly everything that you need to know when it comes to suppliers and supply invoices on Sage accounting. Let me show you guys. All right. So obviously, when you log into the system, and I'm just re working with a demo company at the moment, or just a, a trial version that I signed up. But we did the, the the basic setup when it comes to the company. All the basic setup was over there, and the company settings, everything to do with customers over there. And you'll see the one with suppliers is very similar to the customer one, where everything that you need to know about suppliers you will find under that tab over there. So the first one you can see you've got a button that says Add a supplier. Then you've got the list of supply. You can see there's your transactions where you can work with purchase orders, supply invoices, returns, payments. Supply batch payments, allocate payments, supply adjustments, we'll talk through that and then over there is your reports as well. So let's maybe jump to the first one of here where we say that we want to add a supplier. So how it works <clears throat> that if you want to add a supplier, there's two places where you can add suppliers on Sage. So the one place is over here where you go to suppliers and then you go to um, add a supplier. The other one is over here, if you create data fences as supply purchase order or otherwise supply invoices, there's also a place where you can add a supplier over there and I want to show you guys what the difference is. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this um, uh, SAAN which stands for SA Accounting Network. And then you can see, you can see this opening balance over there. For suppliers, there's not really much more and that you actually need to do on the screen over here. You can use Sage as almost like a database where you can use this program to load all the data of your suppliers. You can load the email addresses and contact numbers and stuff like that. It's always useful to have it in together in one place and to use Sage as a database. That was what it's made for. So you can go put all your supply details in here. You can put email addresses, telephone numbers, mobile. But all the stuff is basically just for your information. And if you work with purchase orders and stuff, then it's nice to have it. So you can see it's quite a, a long set of information that you've got to do. But the main thing is just obviously put the name in there and then you can hit the save button. You see, so for suppliers, they don't really require anything else because remember, you're not going to be sending your supply as invoices and stuff like that. When it comes to supply invoices, um, you can see that you can say add supply invoice. So, this is the other place where you can go and add a supply invoice. So, now you can see and it's giving us a getting started thing there. So, you can see at the moment we only have our SA County Network one there, but this here we have a button that says add new supply. So, you can click that button as well, and you can see it, it does a shorter version of the one that I did just now. So I'm just going to say SA County Network and I'm just going to put the number 2 behind it. You can see it's the basics. You can put in the contact name, email, telephone number and that type of stuff inside the screen over here. So that is basically the two ways that you can add a supplier and then obviously once you've got your suppliers listed you or added, you will have a list of all your suppliers over there. And then there's one thing that I want you guys to take note of. When you work with suppliers, <clears throat> under normal circumstances, you would only work with supply invoices for people that you do not pay in the same month or if it's operating expenses. So let's say, for instance, you've got a telephone account, you're not going to go create a supply invoice for Telcom and then you say telephone bill and then obviously um, if the, the telephone account itself because Otherwise, you, you're putting an extra step into the accounting system. So now, when it gets to the banking, instead of you just saying account, telephone, thousand bucks, which is like one transaction. Now in the banking, we're going to show you just now how to do the supplier payments, but then you can have to, instead of account, you're going to have to choose your supplier, choose Telcom, and then after that, you have to allocate the payment against that specific invoice. So you're adding another step into the accounting package. So the supply invoices, 
please cost of sales accounts so if you work with items and stuff like that with suppliers so that you that if you want to keep track of your items then you suppliers over there and the people that you pay but not within the same month you so let's say for instance you've got um uh, accounting fees and I do financial statements for you let's say for instance the fee is 10,000 rand for the financial statements and we make an agreement that you can pay me in six months time then you would load it as a supply invoice so you can get that expense into the right period so just watch out for supply invoices for normal operating expenses don't use it because you're just complicating things but let's quickly carry on um, so supplies <clears throat> so when it comes to supplies you can see obviously we've got the list of supplies that we did now and you can see over here's your supplier and um, supply transaction so the first one over there would be if you work with supply purchase orders so this is normally for bigger type of businesses but let me quickly show you how it works so if i go to my supplier invoices uh, supply purchase orders i can say that i want to add the purchase order and then over here i'm going to choose um myself <clears throat> so i'm going to say that we want to supply load a supply purchase order for sa accounting network the first one over there you can see the document numbers remember when we when we did the basic setup of the company that is we can change the the the, the, the document numbers if there's order numbers from your clients itself you would put that in numbers in over there then you can see at the bottom over there obviously you've got to put in the date addresses and stuff if you want to and you can see over here a, a selection where you can say account or item so remember for normal expenses if it comes to operating expenses don't use the item one because what happens if you use item everything that you load as items goes under the cost of sales section so if you go make an item there's just accounting fees then under your cost of sales on your reports there's going to be accounting fees over there just remember those type of stuff is, is, is operating expenses so always use account for operating expenses items if you're buying and selling stuff by all means then use it otherwise like i said keep it simple keep it on account it's easiest to, to use it over there so we're just going to say accounting fees let's say for instance we say that we want to do for five thousand rand then what will happen is if you say save then you'll see that you will have your supply order over there so also something interesting to note about supply orders is that this is basically just a, a system to get the supply orders onto the system so these transactions actually does not reflect on your accounting records it's only once you change it over to a supply invoice that it starts reflecting you see so so like i said that's why i say supply orders is normally for bigger type of businesses if you've got a small business like a plumber or electrician or something like that you would normally not work with these type of things so it's just so that you can keep track of the expenses inside the company so two ways again to load a supply invoices once you've got the supplier order there you can go on the side over there and you can see over there is a little button that says create invoice so we're just going to change whatever details was on that supply invoice if you press this button you can see now it changes over to a supply invoice so now we can go hit the save button over there and that is how you would create the supply invoice via so the supply order screen over there so the other place we can go do it if it goes to suppliers if you go to transactions top one is supply purchase orders now i can see it takes supply invoices so it brings you to the same screen where we now now i'm just going to load a second supply invoice over here so i'm going to say add supply invoice this time we're going to use our second supplier which we're going to call san2 again we're going to say that the account over there was for accounting fees uh, if i can get my a to go there's my accounting fees this time i want to make it a different amount let's say for instance we call it ten thousand rand then i can hit the save button so that is basically about the supply invoice would look for for accounting fees so now you can see that i've got the two supply invoices i've got the main one or the one for ten thousand rand which i created straight from the supply invoices screen and the second one that i created via the the supplier purchase order screen so the, remember there's a difference between the two like it's the easiest if you do work with supply invoices just go straight to suppliers transactions purchase supply invoices and that is how you do it now the next button you can see over there is the one that says supply returns so if let's say for instance you get a supply invoice from a cust from a from from a supplier of yours um for let's say for instance um, for for 10 of a certain item that costs a thousand rand each and he comes and delivers and he can only give you nine then remember then you're going to have to do a return for a portion of that supply invoice so let's maybe use the top one so i can then go so there's two places to do it again you can see there's an action button and you can see that there's the button that says create supply return so i can now go and say that i want to return this invoice so let's say for instance i only want to return a certain portion of it I want to say only a thousand rand then you can see if i hit save and i'll go back to my supply invoices 
and then you can see, I'll show you quickly what it does now. So you can see it's probably going to open up on the supply return. So there's my supply return for 1,000. So if I go to suppliers, supply invoices, you'll see that that supply invoice, the original one shows 10,000 rand. You can see the amount you now only shows 1,000 rand because I did the supply return by this button over here under the actions button you see. So the other place where you can do it, the nice thing if you do it this way, that, that Sage automatically then goes and allocates that supply return to that specific supply invoice so there's a difference so if let me quickly show you the other way to do it if i go to suppliers transactions and i mode load a supply return manually and i say that i want to add a supply return and i go to the same one i'm going to say saan2 and then this time i am going to load a supply invoice so you see now i've got to choose which account i want to use and I want to say that it's 2,000 rand. So we can make a difference between the two. So remember now, we made the original invoice for 10,000. We did a supply return via the original supply invoice for 1,000. And I did a manual 2,000 rand one now. But now, if I go to my suppliers and I can look at my supply invoices, you'll see that the top one still shows 10,000 rand. And you can see the amount due now shows 9,000 rand. So the reason why is because the second supply return that I loaded manually, I didn't allocate it to a specific supply invoice. So there's a step that you need to take there. And it's the same with payments as well. We're going to touch on payments just now, but you're going to follow the same step over there. So if you go to suppliers, you go to transactions, you see over here, so one that says so allocate payments. So I'm just going to open this one up in a new tab just to show you guys. And then I'm going to choose my supply, which will be the number two one. And then I say refresh. So you'll see now on the right hand side there, I've got my supply return, the one that I captured manually, our original supply invoice. And then I just drag that supplier, that payment over to that side, scroll down, hit the save button. And now you can see that on that invoice, if I had to go back to my supply invoices screen, the screen over here, and just refresh this page you will see that that amount due on that one over now is going to change from 10,000 rand down to 7,000 rand. So because I took the second supply return that I did and I allocated that manually to the other one. So let's quickly run through the next one over there. So we touched on supply purchase orders, supply invoices, supply returns, supply payments. I wish that Sage would take this button off from this screen over here because this creates so much confusion on the system. We, I haven't done the banking video yet, but I want to show you how to do supplier payments via the banking screen. So the problem that you've got is if you use this functionality, that you say supply transactions and you load payments over here, and those transactions imports from your bank statement when we set up the banking, then those payments are going to show twice. So somewhere you're going to have to delete something, which is going to cause a lot of confusion. So please don't use this functionality, the supplier payments button over there. If you go to banking, let me quickly show you. I'm just going to go to, just choose a bank account. We're going to use that one over there. So I want to show you quickly if you do a supply payment. So let's say for instance, I'm going to just do that. And we say supply payment. Obviously those ones will pull through from your bank feed itself. And you can see over here, on the screen over here, there's a drop down. So now I can say that I want to allocate it to a specific account. I can use a customer, supplier, or transfer. So I'm going to choose supplier, and then now I'm going to use that same one, that's SAN2, and then this time I'm going to say that I've spent 3,000 Rand, that I'm paying a portion of that invoice over there, and then if I just had to press save, so remember now, we had our original invoice of 10,000 Rand, our first reply return 4,000, second one was 2,000, now you can see the balance is showing 7,000 Rand. So in theory, if I made the payment for 3,000 Rand, there's only be supposed to be 4,000 Rand balance on that invoice, but again, it still shows 7,000. So the reason why is because that payment is not allocated against that specific um, payment, no, to that specific supply invoice. So once again, I can either go to this screen over here, and I'll go refresh this screen again over here to say that I want to look at this supplier. Refresh, and you can see now I've got the 3,000 rand payment, I've got my invoice. So once again, I can drag it over to that side to allocate that payment against that invoice. When we get to the bank, and we're going to chat about this again, but there's an easier way, that little fork over there on the right hand side. If you click on the fork, you can see it opens up invoices, so I can say that I want to allocate it to that one. Press save, save changes, and now if I go back to, back to my supply invoices over here, Refresh the screen now, we'll see that that balance over there is going to bring come down to 4,000. 
And because I've got the two, two returns, one payment over there. So now it shows 4,000 Rand. So suppliers, once again, transactions, we did supply invoices, returns, please do not use this functionality for payments, batch payments, allocate risk payments, we, we looked at that. Supply adjustments, let me quickly show you guys what supply adjustments is about. So this points is for some reason I captured my supply invoice incorrectly. Then I can go to um, add a supply adjustment. So add a supply adjustment. And we are going to say that as for SAM2, that one over there, we want to decrease it. And we want to make it accounting fees. We're going to decrease it by 500 bucks. Just quickly see. I think this is, you see over here, it wants to change it. Probably I select, probably didn't select it, and that's why I probably just put the full amount through. So it's quickly say process. So now it should work. <clears throat> so if I go back to my supply invoices, the balance of that one should be 3,500. <coughs> it's all thumbs. <clears throat> you can see 3,500. <clears throat> so the next thing, when it comes to supplies, <clears throat> I think we went through these ones up here. <clears throat> you can see there's your supply invoices, returns, payments. Um, allocate payment supply adjustments, <coughs> reports. You can run through some of these reports over here. <coughs> the important one that you must look at is this one that says supply balances stays outstanding. So if you had to look at this one over here, you can see by pressing this button, you can see who you owe money for, for how long. So it will give you a list of all your supplies over here. <coughs> so just remember once again, during a month in procedures, you have to do a reconciliation of what you're seeing here with your supply statements. So they need to send you statements to say, listen, dude, you owe me three and a half thousand rand. <coughs> you go to the screen, make sure that you've got the same amount there, and then you know that these amounts are accurate because otherwise, all the reports are going to be out if your balance is, is incorrect over here. <clears throat> One thing to note as well, we go back to suppliers. You can see over here some reports that you can look at. So we looked at the supply balances, days outstanding. And then the one that we use often over here is the one that says supply transaction. Because this one is really nice. It gives you a chronological order of what happened. You'll see that you can click on this amount of here, just on this report. And then you can see it will show you what happened with that specific account. But it's not 100%... It's not the nicest screen to use this one. So if you had to go to, where's my report going to now? Mm -hmm. So let me quickly just scroll up. So if I go to suppliers, go to reports, go to supply transactions, then you'll see on this one over here, it gives you like a chronological sequence of what happened. You can see if you've got different options, you can say all or you can say monthly. We're gonna choose our supply, which is SAN2. And then if I say view report, and then you can see over here, it gives you like an order of what happened originally. You can see we've got the invoice of 10,000 Rand, and there's our supply payment, there's our one return, there's our second return, there's our supply adjustment, and you can see the balance. Now, if you get your statement from your supplier, you can take that statement and compare to what you've got here to make sure that the two amounts correspond with each other. I think the only thing that's left to do under suppliers, you'll see right at the bottom of here, you've got a one that says special, and there you can adjust opening balances over there. So that is one place where you can put in opening balances for supplies. The other part one is over here. If you go to um, your opening balances screen over here, so if you're converting from a different system and you want to load supply balances over here, and there's opening balances on this screen over here, there's the other place where you can load it. As so you can see that there's a button over there. We can add supplies and then you can see that you can load um, the opening balances for your supplier. So those are basically the two places. Obviously, there will be in a balance over there. You've got to make sure that the little thumbs up are there. And I think that is basically all you need to know about supplies. But once again, I want to caution you guys. Don't use supply invoices for operating expenses. You're making yourself double work if you had to do that. Only use suppliers, supply invoices for people that you're not paying immediately. So you can just get that expense into the right period. And if you're working with cost of sales with items, then you use, need to use supply invoices as well. So those are the only two times when you use supply invoices. Once again, thanks for watching the video. Remember, once again, like the video, subscribe to my channel. Keep an eye out for the next one.